Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, everything is so automated these days. In fact, many times too automated. So how do you have an extreme, uh, pleasant customer experience when we're merging man and machine? We'll have that answer next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I'm sure you've had this experience before. You're, you're calling a company and you're getting uh, pushed up and down the phone tree, press nine for this, zero for this, replay the message again, and you're just fresher and you just want to talk to a human. I, I think we can all identify with that. To talk about that today, Tim Holney, he is the CEO of Humash. And uh, let's talk about this because I think it is fascinating how, you know, during the pandemic, everything got automated, but you can't take humans out of the mix, can you? No, it, it's actually a combination. It's a, a blend between humans and machines, right? Where you take the creativity and experience of, of humans and blend it with some of the AI and automation to create better customer experiences. And at the end of the day, that's, that's what it's about, creating better customer experiences. And when people hire you, you to come in, what, what are you doing for the companies? Well, a lot of times companies, uh, they are not answering their calls 24 by seven. And in today's world, your customer wants to reach you 24 by seven by 365. So how do you answer that? Whether it's a voice call or a, or a chat or an email, you have to respond to those customers. AI, artificial intelligence, now allows you to transact 24 hours a day. So you can at least attempt to solve their issues. And if not, then you can escalate to an agent. Absolutely, we're gonna hear more about that in a minute, but let's go ahead and watch this overview video. We live in a world without boundaries, never ending connections, limitless access to information, people, companies, endless possibilities at our fingertips. All of us customers searching for instant solutions, answers, someone who listens, understands, uses our digital world to anticipate and solve problems. Human understanding with machine accuracy and automation. Humans plus machines. Blending the creativity and experience of agents with the latest advancements in technology to help companies engage, acquire, and support customers. Imagine the possibilities at the intersection of humans and machines. Humash. So Tim, I'm curious, when you get approached by a company for the first time for help, does somebody on your team do a little mystery shopping? Like you, you actually call to find out what kind of experience the uh, you know, customer off the street is already having? That, that's a great example of what, what we do, right? So we'll call and understand if somebody gets thrown into voicemail jail or if they get routed around or uh, really important today is if if they call and you give all your information and then you reach an agent and they ask for all your information again and you're frustrated or they transfer you and, and you're asking for all that information. And so the key is to have kind of this single conversation where anything you do with the AI and automation will actually be, be delivered to the agent so that that outcome is faster and it's more thorough since you already have exactly what you were trying to do with the automation. And is it your experience that, you know, I, I'm a boomer and I, I would rather talk to a human than a computer anytime. Um, are millennials and Gen Zs a, a little more accepting of uh, interacting yes. with c computers? I, I think it's changing. I think you, you ask for agent, right? You call and you get mm -hmm. frustrated and say agent, agent, you know, give me an agent. 
with natural language processing today and some of the, the speech technology, you can have a good conversation. And it's all about conversational design. Um, and I think that that's really the key. Um, if, if you're not um, having a, a natural language conversation, you're going to get frustrated. So millennials today, they're, they're really embracing uh, any type of outcome. Really, they're looking for resolution. And so if you can do it in an automated environment, a lot of times they prefer it. You know, a lot of the young kids don't even want to talk to you. They just want to text. Yes. They don't answer the phone. <laughs> I get that. I've got uh, two uh, uh, adults. I now, have two but, boys uh, <laughs> that are the same way. Exactly. Exactly. We can, we way, can yeah. identify. Uh, you get quoted in the media quite a bit. We're going to put up an industry magazine uh, with uh, an article that featured you. Um, have, how would you describe the last couple of years? I mean, especially with the pandemic, even co companies that had been res uh, resisting automation uh, certainly had to pivot. I would say we, we started, we spun some assets out about five years ago into Humash, Humans Plus Machines, to kind of focus on this, uh, I call it evolution of automation uh, that, that's helping customer experience. And when, when COVID hits, are your customers freaking out? Are they calling you saying, yeah. okay, Tim, we need a new solution? <laughs> so it was slow for adoption. It was, was it? really slow for adoption. And when COVID hit, people really started to open their eyes for AI and automation. And I think that that's changed today because now it's all about customer experience uh, is differentiating you in the marketplace, right? When you can answer that phone, you can resolve that issue, you can take care of that customer. I always use Amazon as an example, right? Amazon is a great example for customer experience. You know where all your product is all the time. If you have any issues, you can get through to them and they can resolve the issue quickly. So that article you brought up was really the uh, agent assist, which was the last part of our kind of AI automation, where now not only can you use AI to transact, but when you get to the agent, it might say, well, we thought Jeff was attempting to do this, but the AI assist will come on and, and recommend what to do to resolve that issue. And so it's, it's continuing to learn. And so the more it resolves, the more the machine knows. And now it can recommend to the agent, which ends up with faster uh, customer service outcomes. I think this is fascinating. And to put a little bit more meat on the bone, let's go ahead and roll this tape now. Wow, that's fascinating. Let, let's talk about why this is so important for companies to, to adopt or at least get in the right frame of mind to, to bring this kind of technology uh, into the company. Because I don't know about you, but we've all had a bad experience at a restaurant and we say, that's it. We're never going back again. One bad customer experience can uh, cost a company millions of dollars, can't it? Absolutely. I, I think if you look at um, labor today, it's hard for companies to get labor. Right. So so how are you going to handle some of these high volume, low complexity transactions? Automation. And if you look at that example on that tape, you see some AI and automation that's actually hitting a database and they know you're transacting and the machine is responding back. And you're comfortable with it because it's telling you where your product is. It's telling you how to how to return your product and it's taking the human out. And anytime there's an exception to that, it goes to a human, which, again, blends the the humans and the machines, which we think mean for the tagging, for the intent of what you're trying to accomplish so that the machine can get smarter and smarter. So how do you deal with a customer that is in some kind of industry where let's take the power grid, uh, you know, famously went out last winter. And if, uh, if you're with an uh, electric provider, man, you're prepared for this volume of calls and suddenly you got this volume of calls. Uh, how does your system work to, to deal with uh, the, you know, the, the unicorn event? That, that's actually where automation really kicks in, because if, if you are the end, a lot of them don't, but a lot of them need this is once they know there's an outage, then that should alert the system so that it can intercept that call coming in to say, you know, Jeff, we know you have an outage. We're working on that. Here's the ETA for that 
uh, for that resolution. And I think that's where AI kicks in is they, it can literally jump in and take that. So the more important escalated calls, maybe there's a fire, right? Yeah, you don't right. want those buried in those calls of, hey, we have an outage. You need those calls to get to the top so that, you know, that's an important call. Yeah. That's a priority call. I, I know what you're you're talking about because uh, yesterday my wife went in for a very minor procedure. She was she's fine, but throughout the whole experience, I'm getting text messages. Uh, you know, the your your friend or loved one is resting comfortably, <laughs> and I'm getting updates every 15 minutes. I thought it was delightful, and and that makes my experience with this particular medical group so much uh, more attractive. In fact, think of communication when people are communicating to you you feel comfortable. You're not going to reach out and ask them what's happening. And so when you get those text messages, that's, that's taking you through the journey. Yes. Then you're, you're comfortable with that journey. And so you're less apt to even call. So that's kind of proactive. Yes. Um, proactively, you know, trying to address your needs before you have a need. Outstanding. Uh, Tim, we only have about a, a minute left. Is there any final thoughts? If there's a CEO watching this right now, scratching their head saying, well, I wonder if I need to engage Tim's company. What, what would your message be? My message is to get started. I, I'm still amazed how few companies actually use uh, AI and automation for customer experience. And even if you're starting with a, a small containment rate of, of 10, 20, 30%, you should at least start to transact with an automated environment. It, it improves your customer experience, improves your customer service and your sales. Um, there's really very little doubt to getting started. Tim, you've been a great guest. We're going to end by putting up your website so people can get in touch. It's humosh.com is the website. Tim Holney, thanks for coming thanks, on the show. Thanks, Jeff, for having me on the show. I appreciate it. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.